Welcome, welcome to the Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. Thanks so much for listening. Today, the latest on steel tariffs, the teacher strike, and who will be visiting the White House today. Plus, what to know from last night's Academy Awards and which movie won the weekend box office. All that and much more in less than 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. Today is Monday, March 5th. You ready? Let's do this. We start today with the Academy Awards. The Oscars turned 90 last night, so here are a few of the highlights. The Shape of Water was the big winner. It got Best Picture, and it went home with a total of four Oscars, more than any other movie. Best Actress went to Frances McDormand from the movie Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. She told all the female nominees in all categories to stand up and called on more projects by women to be financed in Hollywood. Gary Oldman got Best Actor for his role in Darkest Hour. And you know the movie Get Out? Well, writer-director Jordan Peele made history. He was the first African-American to win for Best Original Screenplay. Rachel Morrison was the first woman to be nominated for Best Cinematography. And even though she didn't win for the movie Mudbound, she may be back next year. She worked on Black Panther. Jimmy Kimmel was the host again this year. And of course, he joked about everything from politics to the mistakes at last year's ceremony. And he even offered a free jet ski to the winner with the shortest speech. You can see the full winner's list and more highlights from the ceremony in today's show notes at thenewsworthy.com. And final thing, Google says this year's Oscars was the most searched Oscars of all time. Hundreds of thousands of people still do not have power because of that storm that hit the Northeast over the weekend. The Weather Channel says for some people, the electricity may be out through Wednesday. There was flooding and falling trees. At least nine people were killed because of the storm's effects. Thousands of flights were canceled Friday and Saturday. And now another storm with snow and strong wind is expected later this week in the Northeast. But it'll be hitting the upper Midwest first, about right now. And it already hit parts of the West Coast. Two California ski resorts dealt with avalanches over the weekend in just two days. The latest at Mammoth Mountain Ski Resort, where the AP says three people were partially buried, but they are okay. And before that, at Squaw Valley Ski Resort, two people were hurt in that one. That heavy storm dumped more than six feet of snow in some of the higher elevations. Some people are making it known they are not thrilled with the idea of tariffs on steel and aluminum. As a reminder, we first talked about this on Friday. President Trump said he wants to put a 25 percent tax on steel imported into the U.S. and a 10 percent tariff on aluminum imports. He says it'll bring more manufacturing jobs here in the U.S. But over the weekend, other types of U.S. companies said, wait a minute, we're not loving this. The Wall Street Journal reports manufacturers who use those metals for beer cans, cars, and refrigerators, for example, are now warning of price increases, shortages, and more trade problems. And they say we also need more details about what to expect so we can plan our businesses. The AP reports even some fellow U.S. Republicans are voicing concerns, and definitely other country leaders have put out warnings. But the Trump administration went on TV yesterday to say, don't worry, this will be a good thing and that there could be some exceptions. So more details are expected either this week or maybe next week. Stay tuned. Today, President Trump is getting a visitor. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is coming to the White House. But things have not exactly been going too well for Netanyahu. There are Oh, four corruption investigations hanging over his head right now. In fact, Reuters reports he was questioned by Israeli investigators for hours on Friday. So CNN predicts he'll be looking for a win at the White House, something good to take back and tell Israel after meeting with President Trump. Fox News says the two are expected to talk about several things, including Iran, Syria and North Korea. And they've already created a bond over the U.S. embassy in Israel. Remember, President Trump wants to move the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem. Israel likes it. Some other countries, not so much. All right, other things people may be talking about today. The teacher strike in West Virginia is still going on. Today is the eighth day. Schools across the state will be closed. CNN says the teachers want a 5% raise and they won't come back until they get that. Remember, the governor agreed to it originally, but lawmakers said the money isn't there and they wouldn't pass the bill to make it happen. So for now, the strike continues. 
Black Panther did it again. The Hollywood Reporter says the Marvel superhero movie won at the box office for the third weekend in a row. It's now the 10th biggest film in the U.S. of all time, and Market Watch says it's the third fastest to hit the half a billion mark in the U.S. As for worldwide, Black Panther is getting close to bringing in $1 billion. A couple thousand people, many who don't know the royal family, will apparently get to go to the royal wedding this May. The Guardian reports Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are now inviting members of the public. They apparently want them to feel part of the celebrations, and they want the crowd to have people from a diverse range of backgrounds. But those invited won't actually get to go to the ceremony or the reception, but they will be closer than everyone else to watch them arrive and then leave. And that's it. You are all caught up. Thanks so much for listening, and I would love to connect with you even more. So head on over to Instagram and follow me at The NW Podcast. Comment there so we can actually interact. You can always read more about any of the stories that caught your attention in today's episode. Just head on over to thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and find today's date. The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by 4 a.m. Eastern Time. I'll be back with more news tomorrow. Have a great day. <laughs>